Good morning. I'm Miriam Saxon, vicar here at St. Andrews in Haw River. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. We're delighted if you are a visitor that you are here and, and welcome to the members of our community. To the members of St. Andrews, I uh, remind you again about our coffee hour at 1130 today. Um, the Zoom link will be in the link you have to get to this service. Um, it's just a great chance to catch up. And then next Sunday, uh, we'll see what weather's like, but we're going to try another outside service, outside Eucharist at two o'clock. Um, again, the link will be sent out to you how to sign up, and you really, really, really need to sign up because I have to know the numbers. And if you can't do that online, please call me. We'll begin with a moment of silence, and then today we are switching to right one. Um, so we will begin with the penitential order, since this is a penitential season, which begins on your prayer in your prayer book on page 319. 319. We'll begin with a moment of silence and then some music. Again, turning to page 319 in your Book of Common Prayer. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. Seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with thy spirit. Let us pray. Most merciful God, who did send thy messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sin. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. 
make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cries, says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, Gerald, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his re recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them to his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm reading for the second Sunday in Advent is Psalm 85, verses 1 through 2 and 8 through 13, which you'll find beginning on page 708 of the Book of Common Prayer. I invite you to read with me either in unison or responsively as you'd like. You have been gracious to your land, O Jacob. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to God's people. Won't you join me in singing hymn 67, Comfort, Comfort Ye My People?
a reading from 2 Peter chapter 3. First of all, you must understand this, that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and indulging their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For ever since our ancestors died, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. They deliberately ignore this fact that by the word of God, heavens existed long ago and an earth was formed out of water and by means of water through which the world at that time was deluged with water and perished. But by the same word, the present heavens and the earth have been reserved for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the godless. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness? waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you were waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish. In regard, the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in singing hymn 54, Savior of the Nations Come. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory be to thee, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, 
and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I've got a folk song for you today. It's called Camp a Little While in the Wilderness. We'll camp a little while in the wilderness, in the wilderness, in the wilderness. Oh, we'll camp a little while in the wilderness, and then I'm going home. And then I'm going home, and then I'm going home. We'll all be making ready, oh, ready. And then I'm going home. Oh, fathers, are you ready? Ready, oh, ready. Oh, fathers, are you ready? And then I'm going home. And then I'm going home. And then I'm going home. We'll all be making ready, oh, ready. And then I'm going home. Oh, mothers, are you ready? Ready, oh, ready. Oh, mothers, are you ready? And then I'm going home. And then I'm going home. And then I'm going home. We'll all be making ready, oh, ready. And then I'm going home. We'll camp a little while in the wilderness. In the wilderness, in the wilderness. Oh, we'll camp a little while in the wilderness. And then I'm going home. Thank you, Megan. Hello, children. I have um, returned my background to where I truly am. You have to put up with my messy um, bedroom slash office because I want to show you some things. Um, Jan talked a little bit last week about um, Advent and um, next week I'm going to talk about John the Baptist but I had to find something that I couldn't find today so we're going to talk a little bit more about Advent. Um, a lot of you may have an Advent calendar at your house where you mark off the days till Christmas. Sometimes you have a little trinket or a piece of candy behind each of those days. Um, but I want to talk again about the Advent calendar that you may have in your house. When um, Jesse, uh, when you see Jesse Griffin again, he read the psalm, you'll be able to see in his background picture the Advent wreath that we have at church when we can be there in reality. So next year, we will be able to use that beautiful one at the church. But I want to show you mine because it has some special things. Before I do that, I want to talk about colors because there's a little bit of confusion about Advent. Um, penitential colors tend to be purple. So in Lent, you will see everything in purple. And in our church, the back, all the hangings are purple because those are the colors that we have. But if you were to visit other churches, you might see a blue. This is my blue stove. Um, it's called, the blue that she used is called Sarin Blue for Mary. Um, and I just wanted to show you that we don't always um, 
it's always not always one color. So sometimes you will see an advent candle set that has blue candles, not purple. Um, I happen to have the purple ones because that's just what was easy to order. And there are four of them for the four Sundays in Advent. And last Sunday, I lit this one. And today, I'll light this one. I didn't want to light the candles because I was afraid to catch myself on fire sitting here in my office. And then the third Sunday on uh, December 20th, we like this pink one. Um, and we'll talk probably talk about that some more on that day. That's the, almost the last day. And it's a sign of hope. But if you can see my Advent wreath, I bought this a year or so ago. It has children holding hands all the way around it. And you can't read it, but every um, in, in four places around it, it's one child is holding a banner that says peace, one says joy, one says love, and one says hope. And that's because those are the words given to each of these candles as um, the words to remember during Advent. So I hope you have one at home and that you can light your second candle today and think it, the candle, the, it's an Advent wreath, a circle, which is a symbol of the eternity of God, the unbrokenness of God's being with us is in a circle. Um, and it, the lights are to show us the light of Christ that is coming at Christmas. So, I'll see you again next week. Here's a John the Baptist hymn. This is hymn number 75. There's a voice in the wilderness crying. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In this second week of Advent, I have often find myself, found myself returning to words that Deacon Jan shared in her homily last week. She quoted Bishop Sam, who recently reminded all of us that Advent is a season soaked in hope. This statement from Bishop Sam has stayed in my heart and mind all week. However, I would add what novelist Barbara Kingsolver says about hope. She clarifies that the very least you can do in your life is figure out what you hope for. And the most you can do is live inside that hope, not admire it from a distance, but live right in it under its roof. Advent is a time of waiting, but waiting in hope 
and anticipation for the joyful celebration of the coming of Emmanuel, God with us. But honestly, I really hate waiting. And I've been spending a lot of my Advent meditation and prayer time thinking about what patience and stillness of heart and mind it takes to wait. Hence, I think it worth our time this morning to consider this question, how do we wait? How do we wait? Gretchen Zeigenhall, Managing Director of Leadership Education at Duke Divinity School recently wrote an essay about waiting in the season of Advent, and she used an analogy of reading a mystery novel as a source for lessons in learning how to wait. She notes that 2020 has been filled with lessons in waiting. We have already been waiting intensely ever since this past March when SARS-CoV-2 hit our country. We wait for a vaccine and for more medicines and treatments that reduce the deadly effects of COVID-19 on those who are sickened by it. We also wait for schools to reopen, for the economy to stabilize, for more emergency government aid to be appropriated to rescue small businesses and folks in desperate need of our collective aid. We have also waited for a contentious election to end and for societal conflicts and racial violence to cease. We have already waited for so much in 2020, but here we are in Advent when we must really intensely focus on just waiting, but waiting well. In turning to the analogy of mystery novels, Gretchen Zeigenhals writes this, I've noticed that before their tidy endings, good mystery novels actually invite us to sit for a few hundred pages with the ambiguity, the not knowing. They teach us to be patient. They require us to be good detectives, to listen well, to notice details, to be persistent and to not expect easy solutions and to anticipate surprise. Hence, reading a good mystery can provide a kind of formation that is similar to Advent. In both, we are invited to lean into the twisting plot line and the surprise ending. In both, we entertain awe and wonder and humility. In Advent, we sit with the mystery of a poor infant savior of the world and the mystery of how the word became flesh and lived among us. Zygon Halls adds, the divine mystery doesn't make sense. When we watch, wait, listen, and pay attention during Advent, we are giving up our easy certainty, our need for answers that are usually only a Google click away. So Advent helps us practice year after year, when we ever get it right. Year after year practicing of letting go of our certainties. Advent waiting entails letting go of our political posturing, our fundamentalisms and finger pointing, our hashtags and hubris. Rather, it teaches us to watch quietly, wait expectantly, and prepare to seek the Christ child in humble places like a stable. Or as Marilyn McIntyre writes in Christ My Companion Meditations on the Prayer of St. Patrick, one of the things that both scripture and the world teach us is that our search for truth, if we are faithful to it, will lead us to the threshold of mystery with an appetite for certainty gives way to humility and awe. So I think the opening words of the gospel according to Mark are perfect for our consideration of how to wait and how to do that with humility and with true awe. Mark does not begin his gospel account with stories of Jesus's birth or childhood like Luke and Matthew. He simply begins at the point where Jesus begins his ministry, 
Mark opens his narrative with the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And for me, it is this, the beginning of the good news that leaps out and opens my heart and helps me wait in Advent time. In Mark's clipped and rushed manner, he leaps directly into the story of God coming to live as one of us. Mark's whole gospel story says, this is just the beginning of the good news that God has sent to us. God is still working amongst us and through us, working to bring the longed for kingdom of God to fruition. And Jesus the Christ was sent to teach us what God's kingdom is like and to model what God is like. And all of that is based on one thing, love. God's immeasurable and overflowing love for humanity and all of creation. The best news is that God's work continues because God's work is not yet done. What God accomplished in the life and ministry of Jesus and in his death and resurrection continues. The job Jesus began is not over and now it is our job to spread that word to the lost and forlorn, and to wait patiently for God's return to us whenever God determines it is time for the final kingdom to come. As David Luce writes in one of his commentaries, our ongoing work continues in any and every gesture of love, big or small, clearly impactful, or hard to discern whether it had any impact because gestures offered in love participate in the ongoing work of God, who is love, and who sent Jesus both to exemplify that love and to redeem the world in and through God's love. In thinking about the unfinished work of God and how Advent helps us focus on Mark's reminder that Jesus's life and death and resurrection were only the beginning of the good news. I am grateful for our Advent study group that is reading and discussing Michael Curry's, Bishop Michael Curry's new, newest book, Love is the Way. The subtitle of his book is Holding on to Hope in Troubling Times. And I'm discovering that this is the perfect book to read in Advent. Our beloved presiding bishop has written passionately about the power of love and the hope it brings as the only cure in our broken world. He wisely explains that the opposite of love is not hate, it is selfishness. And through family and personal stories framed with words from old African-American spirituals and passages from scripture, Bishop Curry teaches about God's infinite love and how God's love holds us in our darkest times as well as, as in times of joy. He reminds us that the love of God does not end, and if that is so, neither does life. But he adds that God may be the source of love, but people are often the vessels once you understand that, you also start to understand that connecting to the Holy Spirit isn't about what we say in our house of worship on a Sunday. It's the community of love we create for ourselves and for others. When that happens, God is there. That's God showing up. We're resting in God's hands. So perhaps that is the answer to how we wait in Advent. We wait with patience because we know Christmas will come. We know this pandemic will end, maybe not in our measure of timeliness, but in God's time. And we learn so many lessons in the meantime about loving others. As Jay Sidebotham writes, the COVID vaccine is not here yet, but there is light at the end of the tunnel that small glimmer yet unrealized changes how we act now. He says, I don't know about you, but it has diminished my corona fatigue. 
It's also encouraged me to keep doing the things as annoying as they are that mitigate spread. It's made me take to heart the admonitions that what we do now is an expression of love of neighbor. The medical hope for the future changes how I live now. The collect for guidance from our service of morning prayer prays this. Heavenly Father in you, we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide us and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. And as we walk in God's love and sight, we offer love in every way we can, in every opportunity, large or small, as God's hands and heart of love. God is with us in this Advent time of waiting, patient waiting, of anticipation, of hope. God literally dwells within us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hence, I offer an ending meditation to help us settle into the remaining weeks of Advent. It's a meditation provided by Father Richard Rohr's Center for Action and Contemplation. I invite you to enjoy this moment of contemplative meditation and to repeat it often as you learn, as you learn how to wait knowing that God is with us. So, close your eyes and gently breathe in and out slowly. Feel the gentleness of breath inside your body as you do this. This is God's very breath within you. Now, as you gently breathe in and out, with each breath, out loud or silently, say this. My deepest me is love. My deepest me is whole. My deepest me is limitless. My deepest me is infinite. My deepest me is compassion. My deepest me is sacred. My deepest me is mystery. My deepest me is forgiveness. My deepest me is beauty. My deepest me is God. My deepest me has knowledge to give. I open my heart and listen for the voice of God. Amen. Amen. Please join me in singing hymn 508, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with love. 
Turning to page 326 of your Book of Common Prayer, please join with me in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God for true God, from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people begin on page 328 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially to Michael, our presiding bishop, Sam and Anne, our bishops, and Miriam, our vicar, that they may both by their, by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace and especially to the congregation of St. Andrews present here or virtually that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also, so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all the people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life 
are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And I invite you to pray with me for those who are on St. Andrew's prayer list, remembering especially J.D. Griffin, Janelle Graham, Pauline McHugh, Sandy Marks, Madison Hayes, Roger Setzer, John Ling, Mike Lamb, Ruth and Sarah Lamb, Wanda Paceauer, Jim Jeffries, Liam Snipes, Jessica Saxon, Mary Shepherd. And we also pray for Helen Malahan, Carly Curtoy, Andrew and Gladys Mutareri, and Larry Aguilar. And I invite your own intercessions at this time. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of St. Andrew and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Please join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, Jesse. Peace, Susan. Peace, Megan. We'll conclude with the prayer of spiritual communion and the dismissal. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We present to you our souls and bodies with the earnest wish that we may always be united to you. And since we cannot receive you sacramentally, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all the love of our souls. Let nothing ever separate you from us. May we live in you and may you live in us both in this life and in the life to come. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.